Okay, YouTube, it's been two weeks to the date, and now it's time to proceed on with our wine. Um, the very first thing it says here is to uh, check that your specific gravity is 0.998 or lower. I was at 0.9946, right around there, so we're good to go. Um, next step, sanitize your siphon assembly, primary bucket, 23 liter US gallon carboy, which is what we've got here with the better bottle. Um, long handled spoon. I'm not dealing with the spoon because I'm actually going to be using one of the stainless steel mixtures. Um, so now pretty much what we need to do is siphon this into there and then we'll start adding our fining agents. So without further ado, let's do this. Okay, so we'll take our lid here off. I've already pulled it off here. <clears throat> okay, so first things first, we got to get this lid off here. I did already pry it off there. Reason being, that sucker is really, really on there. <laughs> it's, uh, I only, I've only used this bucket actually a couple of times. So here is my sanitized, uh, auto siphon. Everything has been sanitized in sulfite this time. So with sulfite, you always give it a rinse. Sodium metabisulfite makes a pretty acrid fume, so, um, you'll want to be careful smelling it. So we'll just give this a couple pumps and get it going. So unlike beer, which has sediment at the bottom called a uh, trube, the bottom of your wine, it's called lease. Little factoid. This is not a horror movie. This is winemaking. <laughs> okay, so we're done doing that. Almost a full six gallon, which is sweet. So uh, let me just get the camera rearranged and we'll get back to this. Okay, so here we are. So uh, next step is to add package 2A, which is our sulfites here. It's gonna pretty much kill all the yeast that's still alive in there and maybe any other bugs if anything happened to get in. This will take care of that. And uh, they said to sanitize a spoon, but I didn't do a spoon. I actually sanitized the mixture over there. Uh, didn't sanitize the power drill because, well, you know, probably not a good idea. So let's go ahead and get this all hooked up here. I'm actually going to pop this off first. There we go. That ought to do the trick. I'm using the uh, tray to rearrange this because uh, it's sanitized. Okay, so now what we'll do, we'll just sort of set this. Okay. So got that ready to go. We'll get our sulfite packet here. Add it in and stir vigorously. Sulfites have such a weird smell. If you've never made wine, best thing I can say is just be ready for a very interesting smell. <laughs> So I'm not sure if you can see that or not, given that it's a red, but uh, this mixture just, it just does a, such a great job. Watch, watch the, uh, the level just rise. And you saw it's not spinning that fast. Oop. So it says to stir vigorously for one minute. So we're going to do this for one minute. So the next step is to add the next packet, which is our potassium sorbate. This pretty much, I'm not sure if you can see that, it kind of looks like little yeast. But it, um, it's part of your 
stabilizing process here. This will keep, uh, basically, makes your wine last. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so that's mixing. You're seeing a bit of bubbling going on there. That's actually not me whipping anything into solution here. I'm not sure if you can see that there, but it's starting to form. The next step of the process is to basically whip this uh, wine. That's actually CO2 coming out of suspension. Oh, you can actually see it better right, right around in here. CO2 is falling out of suspension by basically giving it a good, a good beating with the mixture. So uh, the instructions here call for uh, degassing vigorously for five minutes by stirring with the handle of a spoon or with a drill mounted stirring device. Bada bing, bada boom. So we're just gonna keep, uh, basically the way you do that is just kick it and then I'll reverse directions. <laughs> And you want to be careful doing this, because sometimes it will flare up on you. You can see all of that coming up. See, I'm not mixing any air into that at all. So basically, you keep doing that until uh, when you switch between gears, I guess, it doesn't bring up all this gas. I mean, you can just see it bubbling like crazy. Let me let me zoom in here. There you go. See that? All that is CO2 coming out of suspension from the wine. Um, that's exactly what you want to see. Doesn't do any good to have a sparkling Chianti, does it? <laughs> so we're going to keep doing this here. Um, it's going to take a little while, so I am not going to bore you with that one. We're going to do a little bit of time-lapse photography. Go! Okay, so I've been going at that for just about five minutes now, and you can see there is still quite a bit of CO2 coming out of suspension. Just fine. The next step is to add our packet of Kieselsol, which is part of the clarifying uh, stage. Basically what this does is this will attach, it, this is charged and it's going to attach to one, what is it, I guess molecule strain in here, and then your chitosan is going to attach to the other side. They're, they are charged differently, um, both just clear liquids, um, Kytosan is a shellfish der derivative. I'm not sure what Kiesel saw is a derivative of. I can't remember off the top of my head. But um, basically, it is important to make sure that you do it in the correct order. Kiesel saw first, Kytosan second. So we're going to mix this in, give it a good stir for about a minute. Then we're going to add this in, stir it for another minute or so. And then guess what? We're going to degas this for five minutes five to ten more minutes. Um, so by the end of this, you're, you're going to have a, a very sore arm if you don't have one of the little uh, stirrers, <laughs> basically. Okay, so the Kiesel saw. Here we go. Wait. Uh. So I'm not going to whip this, I'm just going to just give it a good stir here. I move the uh, mixture up and down through it, just to help everything get evenly mixed in. Okay, now time to add our Kaitosan.
It's like a gel. I should have squeezed from the bottom. There we go. We'll give this a good mix. And then you guessed it, time to degas. Okay, we are there. Um, I'm not sure if you can see, there's still a fine amount of bubbles coming up, but they're very, very fine. Um, that's a good sign. It's not still cascading like it was before. Um, this has been sitting now for about a minute um, without the drill running. And like I said, the, the bubbles are just so micro fine. The wine is pretty much exactly where we want it to be. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this out of here. Whoops. Okay, just set that there for the moment. So what we do now is we basically top up uh, the secondary here to right around here. You know, an inch or two below uh, the bung is what they recommend. Some folks will swear by uh, taking, you know, this is a Chianti. Take a bottle of your favorite Chianti, um, affordable Chianti. But if you're already drinking it, use the fancy stuff. Top it up with your uh, Chianti. The instructions call for adding uh, water, so that's what I'm going to do. I've got bottled water here. I wasn't sure how much we needed, so I didn't want to fill up another uh, five gallons worth of uh, reverse osmosis. So Try to knock down some of that foam. We'll let that settle for a second here. Yeah, I'm going to try to get the liquid level to right about there. Leave me just about, just shy of two inches. Only microfine bubbles. This baby's going to be beautiful. Okay, so got that done there. Sanitized airlock with water already in it. So I'm just going to carefully put this in here. Again, you know, you don't want uh, all kinds of funky creatures getting in there, so I'm gonna make sure that the cork's really on there. Just doing the squeeze test to make sure the uh, airlock here is holding pressure, which it is. And they're a little crooked. Say la vie. <laughs> It'll get the job done. Ah, water, good for you. Uh, so there we go. That process is done. So now you can see um, there is no bubbles left. There's some left here, but nothing new is coming up. It's going to be perfect. You want to make sure you degas it properly, or else you're going to have a sparkling product. If you don't want a sparkling product, like with Chianti, you don't want it to be sparkling. Um, and it'll also affect how it clears out. So you want to make sure that, you know, you're spending a lot of time and money making a good wine. You want to make sure that it's cleared correctly. So this batch is ready to rock and roll. So now pretty much we're going to wait another two weeks. Uh, so until day 28, if you're tracking it by, you know, the 28 day wine kit. Um, two more weeks, we'll be back here and uh, we'll first check to make sure that we can see through it that it's absolutely crystal clear you don't want to bottle a, uh, a cloudy wine it just it'll never clear out at that time you can address any clarification problems with filtering or other finding agents but we'll cross that bridge when we get there so 
drink water, drink beer, drink wine, whatever you like. Cheers. We'll see you in another two weeks. Now we're going to clean up this crap.